Hi, welcome everyone. We'll get started in just a moment. Okay, welcome everyone. We're so pleased you could be with us here today. My name is Sarah Carr. I'm the Chief Knowledge Broker for Octo, Open Communications for the Ocean. And we're very pleased today to have Audrey Hassan and Daphne Lasselier here with us. Um, Audrey is the Geo Blue Planet Executive Director and Daphne is the Geo Blue Planet Program Officer. They're both with Mercator Ocean International. And they're, and Daphne is going to be presenting today about MDOS, the Integrated Marine Debris Observing System. Um, we're so pleased everyone could be here today. Um, and we welcome participation in the webinar. Um, we'll have about 20 minutes of an initial presentation, and then we'll have plenty of time for questions afterwards. You can send in questions in two ways. You can type them into the Q&A panel, or you can um, send them in through the chat. Um, it's a little bit preferred that you put them in the Q&A panel. They're easier to moderate. But if it's something that you think others in the community will want to weigh in on, feel free to post in the chat so everyone can see it. Um, you are able to post things in the chat for all attendees. We just ask that you keep it on topic and professional. And I'll turn it over to you, Stephanie. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Sarah, and um, hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. So I'm Daphne Le Cellier. I work uh, with Audrey on the Geo Blue Planet Initiative at uh, Mercator Ocean International. And today I will be presenting you the IMDOT, the Integrated Marine Debris uh, Observing System. So, and the agenda today, I will start with a broader context of uh, marine litter and marine uh, debris pollution and the challenges associated. Um, then I will focus on the role of IDMOS, IMDOS to um, respond to these uh, challenges. And at the end, um, I will really um, explain where we are now and where are the following steps in the near future. So um, a little definition to start with uh, from the United Nations Environment Program, uh, what is marine litter? So it is uh, any persistent manufactured or processed uh, solid material discarded, disposed of, or abandoned in the marine and coastal environment. So by definition, marine litter is very transboundary because it's carried out uh, everywhere with uh, ocean currents and river flows. And it's a multi-dimensional problem. Uh, marine litter has many impacts on environment, of course, but also cultural with uh, tourism, economic impacts, and uh, of course, uh, human health uh, risk with um, um, food from uh, fish. And uh, all these impacts have uh, associated costs. When we talk about uh, marine litter, it's very broad and um, we need to know that uh, most of it is uh, from plastic waste. Uh, they represent more than 80% uh, of the total uh, marine debris. This uh, so is a very uh, huge, um, heavy uh, problem, multidimensional and uh, growing. Um, it's important, so in uh, 2021, um, plastic or marine litter was uh, estimated at uh, between 75 and 200 million tons in the ocean, but this problem is growing uh, as annual emissions are projected to double by 2030. So in order to uh, tackle this uh, global issue, um, political um, and government are gathered under the UN and especially the United Nations Environment Assembly and in March 2022, uh, they decided to develop uh, an international legally binding instrument on marine pollution by uh, 2024, so the end of this year, um, and including uh, in the marine environment. So from the start, there is a 
the, the marine uh, litter was uh, stressed. Um, this instrument will address the full life cycle of plastic from its production, from a product design, uh, disposal, waste management, and of course, uh, marine litter and pollution in the environment. These uh, intergovernmental negotiations are led by uh, the INC, the Intergovernmental Negotiating Committee. And the INC will have uh, soon its fifth and hopefully uh, last session in Busan, South Korea, uh, at the end of uh, November. So uh, there is a really um, political momentum to tackle this uh, global and growing problem of uh, marine litter, which is happening right now. But um, from this high um, political overview of the problem, when we uh, dig a bit, uh, it's very uh, complicated and a very complex problem because uh, plastic or marine litter gather a wide range of different things. Uh, marine debris varies uh, in size. We have uh, very big uh, fishing gear or very small cosmetic bits. And on top of that, a plastic in the ocean uh, breaks down or in the environment breaks down into uh, micro and nanoplastics. So we can't see by eye all uh, the plastic or the debris in the ocean. As I said earlier, they are everywhere in the planet, in the ocean, because they are uh, carried out uh, with ocean currents and river and different flows. So we found them from pole to pole in the coastline, but also in the open ocean and down to the, uh, the sea floor. So they are everywhere in the environment in various forms and size. Also, the composition of the plastic um, varies also with different polymers and um, sometimes additive um, are also on top of the plastic of the polymers. Some of them are toxic and plastic can also be associated with pathogens from a different microorganisms that live on the plastic, on the debris. So it's a complex problem. Like it's physical, biology, uh, chemistry with the, with the composition, and it affects the environment. Every type of plastic have different impacts. Uh, small microplastic will be ingested by uh, fauna, by the animals, and contaminate the whole uh, food chain, up to humans and big animals, but uh, also big marine debris can be dangerous and entangle uh, marine animals. So they are in different ways. And most of the plastic is found uh, by the coast where human activities are. So it's a, a wide uh, problem. And different uh, studies and research um, have been done to uh, study and uh, get information on this issue. Different tools are mobilized. Um, from very local studies and help with uh, citizen science initiatives, such as uh, beach cleaning to um, bigger scientific expedition on uh, scientific vessels. But different means and tools are used to assess uh, marine debris and uh, marine pollution uh, from uh, technological tools, such as uh, satellites, uh, drones, remotely operated vehicles, or more, um, in situ techniques, uh, sampling, uh, beach cleaning, or uh, manta troll uh, to gather microplastics. And we have, as you can see from these uh, different tools, um, sometimes we have broad coverage, uh, global data sets. Sometimes we are very local uh, data from um, sports initiatives. And all of this, uh, lead to unified, uh, ununified uh, data sets. So there is a lot of uh, research and initiative done to understand, monitor, and observe uh, marine debris, but uh, it's not harmonized yet. So different information from in various uh, formats. So here come uh, in those. Uh, the, the aim of INDOS was to harmonize all of this uh, data, all of these initiatives, research, and studies to provide a very global, coordinated, and sustained uh, vision 
of um, marine pollution, marine debris pollution. And uh, we have uh, two different um, end user targeted. We want to have this um, harmonized uh, data uh, and information on uh, marine debris for to enhance research effort, but also uh, we uh, target policymakers to inform decision on uh, accurate uh, data, the uh, best science, and a global vision of uh, marine debris. So the role of ITMOS will be to coordinate uh, different initiatives, different studies uh, with data harmonization, sustain observation, um, give guidance, uh, standardize protocols, to then uh, give information uh, such as indicators, policy, policy briefs uh, to the um, decision makers, or um, help researcher to perform a, a, a global vision and uh, perform uh, their research. And there is, uh, as you can see on the diagram, feedback back loops. So we are in constant interaction with these uh, stakeholders and end users to really understand the needs for information and uh, reply to societal, societal needs. Um, we really want to provide actionable information that is global and harmonized. Uh, a bit of history about uh, IMDOS. Uh, it was born um, out uh, a joint project between the Joe Blue Planet uh, where uh, Audrey and I uh, work, um, but also the Global Ocean Observing System for more technical expertise and the uh, UNEP Global Partnership on Plastic Pollution and Marine Litter, GPML, uh, which uh, gather a lot of different uh, stakeholders. So from the start, it was very important to have all sectors represented in the uh, IMDOS initiatives, uh, the scientific, academia, policymakers, government, uh, other experts, businesses uh, as well. So all um, are taking part in this uh, process of having uh, harmonized uh, data and information. And it's rooted in science. Uh, it was also uh, based on recommendation from the Ocean Ops uh, 19 conference uh, session on marine debris. Um, that, um, where the idea of a, um, an harmonized approach for monitoring mar marine debris uh, was born. Um, so the mission uh, of IMDo IMDOS is not to provide uh, data or do uh, research in situ, but really coordinate all the already existing initiatives and uh, network and provide guidance. Um, it can be guidelines, it can be a federated data management system, uh, it can be standardized data. We really want to um, connect stakeholders, decision makers to uh, information, uh, global information and uh, data, uh, and facilitate the access to uh, data on marine debris. We will, uh, so this data harmonized uh, will um, feed the GPML digital platform or the digital twin of the ocean, which are interface between science and uh, stakeholders. We will also uh, inform indicators for regional or global decision making processes. So it's uh, not doing something new, but very uh, a coordination mechanism and system to gather all the information, uh, have a global overview of uh, marine litter and helping uh, decision processes and enhancing research based on harmonized uh, data and observation. So we have been uh, working with uh, many initiatives, groups, uh, networks, uh, and we are built on already existing partnerships, such as IOC, UNESCO, UNEP, GOOS, but also G7 or G20 initiatives. We also work with um, already existing practices uh, for data harmonization from the Ministry of Environment 
of Japan, the EMODNET, the European Marine Observation and Data Network, and uh, NOAA in the United States, or many other. It's everyone is welcome to join and, and co-design this uh, harmonized observing system. Uh, and as you previously see, uh, we take care of the whole uh, Earth observation value, value chain from uh, remote sensing observation, data harmonization, modeling, uh, and so on. And at a higher level, we really want to support the UN uh, 2030 agenda and the objective of the UN um, decade for ocean science for sustainable development. So especially um, for the agenda 2030, the SDG 14 on life below water. Um, and I will recall the target 14.1 uh, by 2025, prevent and significantly reduce marine pollution of all kinds, in particular from land-based activity, including marine debris and nutrient pollution. So it's, it's uh, explicitly mentioned there. And we also contribute to um, challenges from the UN uh, Ocean Decade, uh, especially the number one, understand and beat marine pollution. Um, it says uh, understand and map land and sea based sources of pollutants and contaminants. Uh, and also uh, the goal, obviously the goal uh, number seven, expand uh, the global ocean observing system. So we really work as a network uh, with uh, various uh, stakeholders and initiatives. A bit more uh, concretely, what are we uh, doing um, now? So an interim scientific committee has been established in 2022 with uh, international members from a diverse organization, regional initiative, and um, from diverse uh, countries. And uh, this interim scientific committee developed and adopted the strategy for IMDOS uh, in November 2023. And very recently, we launched a call for participation uh, from early July to the 1st of October uh, with the aim of gathering interest for joining uh, IMDOS and especially the some task teams on specific topics. Uh, we got a lot of uh, responses, uh, more than 80 people from 30 different countries. And we have um, people from all sectors, um, a lot of uh, people from academia and research institute, but also government, uh, businesses, and representatives uh, from the civil society. So as I said, we, will, uh, we want to cover the whole uh, Earth observation value chain uh, with a 14 task team that are uh, divided into three groups. Uh, the first one focus on uh, data with a task team on remote sensing, sea surface microplastics, seafloor litter, modeling, and beach litter. Then we have the upper level of technical coordination with data harmonization, design of monitoring system, technical innovations, citizen science, professional science in situ, and development of indicators. And the third group is a towards stakeholders engagement with data for policy, uh, the UN uh, plastic treaty, and the coordination of different regional observing groups. Um, this uh, task team will start um, from uh, January 2025, and uh, everyone is uh, welcome to join. There will be an uh, open registration uh, process starting uh, at the beginning of next year. Uh, and the, the last step is um, a new steering committee will be appointed. Um, so IMDOS will be headed by um, a decision-making body constituted of uh, two groups, the advisory committee with uh, ex officio members and the work program committee uh, that is made up of the, all the task team chairs and co-chairs. Uh, the, the members uh, will be appointed from the call for participation that just uh, closed at the beginning of the, the month and it will be announced very soon by the end of uh, October now. 
there will be a first uh, in-person meeting in Paris in January uh, to discuss the concrete implementation of the strategy and uh, discuss the functioning of these uh, 14 task teams and the roadmap for the task teams. And from then, we will very constitute the, the groups and the task team with everyone interested. And that's it. So thank you very much for your attention. Um, I'm open to your question and uh, really happy to uh, join uh, the different task teams um, that we have. There is a lot of choice, so. Wonderful. Thank you, Detne. We really appreciate this uh, very uh, clear overview of uh, IMGOS's plans and current work. Um, I would remind everyone, if you want to ask questions, you can put them in the Q&A or the chat, um, and I will ask them to Daphne, and we'll also have Audrey, who may also be answering questions. Um, to get started, I, I'm curious, I, I, will MDOS purely be collecting so, and sort of standardizing and synthesizing existing data from observations, or are there... Um, is it going to be launching get uh, its own initiatives for collecting data, perhaps filling gaps in what already exists? No, so the idea is really to rely on, on the different initiatives from people participating in uh, IMDOS and their uh, research uh, lab and um, but not doing a research on our own. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, we can, that came in. can I just jump in for a second, Sarah, and, and yes, please compliment here. Um, if if I understand your question well, I want to mention that we are not doing any measurement here. We are, I think, I want to say merely, but it's 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 more than this. We are trying to coordinate the actors were making these measurements to make sure that all this data is interoperable and available um, the same way and so on. So what we're really trying to do here and have these players around the same table and agree on you know, what, how they measure, what they measure, how they share these measurements and so on. So again, we're not doing any measurement. We're trying to coordinate the existing and future, because you know, uh, with the treaty and the ratification of the treaty, um, you know, around the corner, uh, there will be more and more uh, uh, data out there. But we need to make sure that they really all, um, uh, you know, fall under the same uh, kind of guidelines, so we can, you know, work them together. Thank you. That yes, that that it was does answer the question um, that I was asking. Um, and, and this is going to be a great opportunity to, I guess, to see what gaps there are. And I'm sure you'll, you will be making recommendations when you see sort of geographic or um, subject matter gaps that are, are not current. There's no current, me no measurements being taken currently. OK, thank you. Um, the question that came in, is the monitoring done just over the open ocean or also harbors, rivers, and other water bodies? So we will focus on um, marine debris, so no inland, uh, and no rivers, if uh, Audrey correct me if uh, I'm wrong, but uh, it can be a shoreline, uh, open water, uh, seafloor, uh, not inland, only, only marine, but everywhere uh, in the marine environment. Yeah, I absolutely uh, concur this. Uh, we'll be focusing on uh, on the ocean. We have ideas of, um, you know, uh, further task teams uh, when we move along. We're already 14 of them, so it's it's already a lot of work here. Uh, I'm pretty sure at some point we'll have to extend to rivers at least because, um, as you know, they they feed into the ocean. They're the main uh, the main um, entry point. Um, but to answer strictly the question that is, is the monitoring done? Yes, monitoring is done everywhere. That's for sure. But what Imbos will be covering is only the ocean part. Okay. Thank you. Um, there was a request that you uh, show the task team slides again. Is it possible to open that up? Uh, 
Okay, great, thank you. And we'll leave that up. Um, so we have a, a range of questions on the topic of still getting involved. Um, I'll go through sort of the various questions. Um, is the call for participation still open? Can we still join? Another one asked the form um, from in that link asked that it be filled out by September 1st, 2024. Can we still sign up? And then someone else noted, we missed the deadline in October. How best can we be part of MDOS and its activities? Okay, I can answer this one. Um, basically, that was just the first round of of um, of applications, and we have taken. We actually had uh, about ninety people answering already, which was uh, really uh, really good for us. Uh, so we are basically selecting from this pool of people uh, just the task team leaders. Uh, but we'll accept members on a rolling basis. So I, I agree we need to uh, update this um, this page. I'm sorry about this. So uh, feel free to, to submit. I think we'll create a separate um, form uh, for, for members, but it, it will be, uh, you know, uh, consistently um, looked at and so on. So you can still uh, go on there. We'll announce by the end of the month the, the task team leaders. Uh, they're the one who will be on the steering committee, as Daphne was saying, plus some ex-officio representation. Um, and from there, they will be discussing, you know, like how many times these task teams will meet per year, uh, what will be the main objective of each, each of the task team. But then once this is basically discussed with the, the chairs, uh, we'll go on and, and have actual task team uh, meetings and so on, and people will be invited to join. So um, feel free to to fill up the form. No worries uh, about the dates that is written there, um, and we'll we'll be in touch. Wonderful, thank you. Um, are there other ways to get involved in addition to being on the task teams? Okay, uh, it's uh, I, I can read from a Daphne's face that uh, this one's for me as well. <laughs> um, no worries at all. Uh, I think at this point, um, most of the work that we've been doing uh, in terms of uh, was like secretary at work. Uh, I, I need to say it wasn't uh, just me uh, at Jogu Planet, but it was also uh, Arthur Palatz from uh, IOPAN in, in Poland and together, and uh, sorry, and I also need to cite uh, Mine Tekman from um, uh, University of Istanbul. Together, we, you know, worked on this strategy with the steering committee. Uh, so we'll be, uh, you know, surely needing help in terms of, uh, you know, uh, rolling this secretariat. So if you're interested in, uh, in, um, you know, giving some of your time for this, uh, we'll more, be more than happy. Uh, we do have some people work uh, on our communication, but more. Uh, you know, more um, manpower is always better. So um, this is something you can add. I think at the end of the form, uh, there is a, a blank um, box where you can add some uh, some things there. You can also just send an email to info at imdos.org. I can put it in the chat. Uh, and yeah, just send us an email and we can answer, you know, specific questions. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Um, so going back to subject matter questions, are you working with marine industries at all to capture in situ location data? Yeah, so in the um, uh, call for participation, we had uh, answers from some um, businesses or private sectors uh, that were doing really monitoring or um, NGO initiatives doing um, pitch cleaning or um, the, yeah, businesses thinking about a uh, new way for gathering uh, marine debris. Okay. Thank you, Dete. Um, another question that came in, for MDOS's data harmonization work, is the goal to harmonize historical data, provide guidance to achieve harmonized data in future monitoring or both? Okay, I can take it as well. Um, I think that uh, unless you wanted to to take it, sorry, Daphne, uh, I'm not sure if you can see me, so it's uh, hard to to <laughs> um, to communicate oh, offline. Okay. 
Okay, uh, anyways, um, so to answer Samuel's question, um, I think uh, at this point, uh, we're looking at, you know, what's what's coming next for future monitoring. Um, I have the feeling that, you know, harmonizing backwards is uh, much more complicated, but that's definitely something we need to keep in mind. Uh, so yeah, I, I would say for now is future monitoring. Uh, and of course, we'll try to integrate as much as possible historical data uh, with what they have, basically. And um, and that's it, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, there was a question about why the call for interest closed before the webinar, and I'll actually answer that one. And it was just, I saw uh, the call for, for interest and thought it, it's like, so uh, this would be a great topic for a webinar. So um, then I requested that. Audrey and Daphne present to us. So that was the reason for the timing for this particular webinar. Um, another question that came in, what kind of format will be used to share information and connect with regional activities, et cetera? For uh, regional uh, activities, there will be a dedicated a task team for regional observation system and groups. Uh, and the idea is really from that the group in this task team to coordinate the different uh, initiatives, uh, regional initiatives, and contact uh, maybe different um, yeah, the different regional groups. Yeah, I can, I can I can provide an example. For instance, we have, and I see Je Je Jennifer Webster is 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 online. Um, for instance, NOAA um, has this you know guidelines for uh, beach litter. Uh, and that's what I call regional because uh, it is not, you know, accepted as the global uh, beach litter monitoring guidelines. But what we want to do is to have uh, NOAA, but also I know that the uh, Regional Sea Convention of, um, uh, sorry, Cartagena uh, for the Caribbean islands, uh, the Regional Sea Convention of, uh, both Regional Sea Convention of UNEP, but uh, the other one of COPSI, Southeast Asia, they also have uh, protocols that they have distributed. So what again, what we really want to do, and as um, as Jennifer is saying, it is really hard, but it's something that we're trying to do is have these people around the table so they can talk and agree. On my end, like I'm a physical oceanographer, you know, I specialize in salinity, so really far from a, from the plastic matters here. So it's not for our role at the IMDOS, you know, a coordination center to tell them, you know, wh what they need to look at, if it is polymer, if it is particle per square meter, whatever. That's for them to discuss. And this is, at least my understanding, the only way for everyone to um accept, endorse, and apply uh, these guidelines. So this is what we're trying to do, really. I think Jennifer also put in the chat somewhere that, um, for instance, we already have a MOEG, so the Minister of Environment of Japan, already looking at some harmonization for the surface microplastic. Uh, so that's, you know, uh, work that IMDOS uh, has been supporting for, uh, for a couple of years now. Uh, there is also some bottom, uh, uh, ocean bottom seafloor um, uh, discussion that are going on. And if you look at the thematic working group, that's really what we want. And it's it's a little bit odd the way, you know, it's it's cut because the ocean is it's continuous, but still we needed to cut into groups and they are cut based on basically um, the historical uh, groups that are out there already working on uh, harmonization and data collection and so on. So again, we're not um, uh, reinventing the wheel. The only thing what, that we are trying to do is really to um, connect and, and have these people uh, talk together so they can agree if possible, hard, I know, but if possible on you know what kind of data, what kind of like measurements technique, what kind of sampling and, and so on. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Daphne. Um, let's see. Looking at the remaining questions. Um one sort of comment that came in uh is it seems like some historical data collection is needed to establish baselines or synthesis of historical data. Do you anticipate this will be part of MDOS's work at all? I, I, I would say absolutely, but again, that, that will be for the steering committee to, to decide. 
Thank you. And I answered the question in the chat of where the recording will be posted. Uh, it'll be placed, posted on the octogroup.org website under webinars. Um, just scroll down that page until you reach the link for this webinar and it should be, it'll be close to the top since it was held today. Um, there's a question. Um, why is beach litter considered marine debris? My NGO Paddle Out Plastic has been collecting data as we collect litter from the water. We realize that litter on beaches is partially from the water, but much is just beach litter, which may or may not eventually litter the water. So I think this is, um, I, I would say a technical question, but um, my understanding, again, um, is that scientists are actually able to see, you know, like as uh, how far the ocean is going. Um, and Beach litter is complicated. We include beach litter because most of, you know, like when we look at models, most of the, the, the beach litter is actually on the beach, then in the water and then back on the beach and so on. And even if it's beyond the, what do you call that? The water line, the, uh, the, the wave line um, uh, or the tide line. I don't know what you call that. <laughs> um, you ha actually have wind that can uh, push them back in the, in the water. So I think, uh, this is why we look at it uh, as a whole, I would say, beach leader, um, and not, you know, the part that touches the water and the part that doesn't touch the water. But it it is, uh, I would say, a, a, a compartment that is looked a little bit differently from, from the rest, most definitely. But all of them actually are different. But yeah, I, 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 I agree. And this is, uh, this is absolutely taken uh, into consideration by the experts from, uh, from this group. Thank you, Audrey. And um, Amy, you uh, also added some additional information in the chat. Um, there was a question that came out. Is this just data about debris or other data that is related to debris in the environment? Um, I, I, just a debris I of associated. I, 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 I don't know. Are we talking about like um biology uh data for like biofilling or ingestion by by the biota are we talking about waves that will uh you know crunch up the the debris and uh and make smaller pieces I, i'm not sure what is um um well carl if you want to add exactly what you were asking about but those are those are good suggestions about possible uh um data that's related to debris in the environment Particularly, I think would think ingestions or um, in microbes found that are identified on debris. Sorry, I missed that. <laughs> oh, um, well, let's see if, if um, the person who asked that question has had, added any information. Well, let's say ingestions, for example, ingestions of debris. So. Okay, so what, what we so again, I think that's uh, it's like the river uh, question that is definitely on the list for the next, you know, um, group of task team that will uh, will uh, start. One thing I can say is that we're looking really at the observation and when not look at the, you know the surveillance of of the the quantity of plastic or you know what plastic there is. Um, we're not looking at pollution or impacts. So what we could consider adding under the IMDOS umbrella would be like how much plastic they find in, in you know, uh, puffin stomachs or whatever. Um, but we will not look at, at, you know, the impact. So like death or whatever happens to these poor animals, if, if, if that's clear. Um, and the person who asked that question, yes, thank you. That answers a good portion of it. Um, they also noted that waste moves around through hydrology and wind and waves. Are are is that is information on that also being collected through MDOS? So uh, hydrology, wind, waves, um, all of this, we do have um, operational agencies looking at them, uh, like NOAA uh, in in the US. We have Copernicus Marine. In, in Europe and, and so on. So we're not collecting this data, but um, especially when we're looking at modeling, you actually need to take all this 
you know, factors into account to, uh, as you say, link uh, and look at the pathways of, of the debris. So um, IMDOS is not looking at gathering this data, but it's for sure that the scientists that will be using, uh, I would say, IMDOS stamped uh, data will also be looking at uh, this other kind of data. Hopefully this answers your question. Yes, okay, thank you. Um, let's see, another question regarding 11, development of indicators. Is there an intention to develop the MDOS platform and data as a potential monitoring, reporting, or verification mechanism for marine debris related projects? Uh, for example, projects looking to clean up marine debris may use MDOS's data guidelines to track progress. That, that's also a really good question. I think it, I, I can even like widen this question in terms of like um, not only the cleanup um, uh, projects, but also like if you just look at, at policies, uh, because they will need to know if the policies are effective or if policies uh, need to be adjusted and so on. So the that that's exactly what you know this uh, this is the development indicators is really asking the scientific community, can we basically dialed on all this data that can be, again, like uh, density or type of polymers of additives or, you know, all this, this different kind of data into a more, you know, like more um, actionable <laughs> uh, information through indicators. So uh, after Palats, again, um, has been working on EOV, uh, on the essential ocean variable for plastic. Uh, and 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 to me, um, the indicator is really almost taking uh, this uh, one step ahead, uh, so it can inform. So we don't plan on having, um, you know, a, a, a platform for visualization. Uh, we could, um, we you know, there there is the GPML, the Global Partnership on Marine Litter uh, Digital Platform. We could think that uh, you know the data uh, will be stored there. Uh, I know there are discussions with uh, UNESCO IODE to, um, you know, basically store uh, the metadata so the people are able to to find the data that they need uh, from there. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's exactly basically, you know, that's that's the end point. But uh, there is a lot to do before that, um, and hopefully we can we can you know make some progress in the coming you know years basically. Okay, thank you. I think we've covered just about everything. Um, well, there was one question that came in. Um, we are interested in implementing remote sensing observation, but not yet. Our, is our participation in this initiative um, still pertinent? Um, really happy to see uh, Abby's question because uh, uh, we are, she she's <laughs> well aware of Jubal Planet and um, and participating in other groups. Um, I think so. You know, it's it's like always with Jubal Planet. Um, the idea it's uh, that is you know like this initiative is contribution based. Um, of course, we don't want to have groups of like fifty people. You know, each because it's going to be unmanageable. Um, maybe we could think of, think about. Um, creating an observer status or um, maybe like until you, um, you know, start working on marine litter, um, you want to just, you know, get the information, come in, listen in the group discussion, because then you can report back to uh, your university and, uh, and say, okay, there's, you know, this group coming together, maybe we could um, um, link to what we're doing. I don't know, but uh of course, you know, contribution of everyone is is welcome. Uh, maybe if you know, basically, we get too too big, we we might have to 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 make some decisions at some point. But uh, um, at the, at this point, to be honest, the more the merrier. And uh, you know, Abby, you're always welcome. <laughs> oh, wonderful! Thank you. Oh, and there had been a question that came in earlier. Is it possible to join the meeting in Paris only by joining a task team? The meeting in Paris is just the steering committee. So this will be the task team leaders. Um, we will be looking at, uh, because again, if we want to have a, a conversation and we want to move forward, uh, we want to keep 
the number reasonable because conversations, as you know, everyone knows, once you've reached, you know, 40, 50 people, then it becomes really unmanageable. Um, so, you know, we, if people are interested, and that's a really good point, uh, we might, you know, just consider streaming uh, the event so people can have a look at, uh, you know, the presentations that are made and uh, listen in the conversations. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll think about it. But for now, yes, it's just uh, it's just an invitation. It's just a uh, task team leaders. Uh, if you feel really really strongly about being a task team leader or that your organization needs to be uh, on this list of ex officio seats, you know, send an email to imdos um, information info at imdos.org, and uh, and we can chat. Okay, thank you. Um... There were a couple of comments that came into the Q and A, so I don't think they're visible to everyone, but they seem like good things. Um, um, it was from Jennifer Webster. And Jennifer, I think you're with Noel. I, yes, you yes, she's with Noel. Yes, okay. And she said, "I'm happy to be part of this group. Getting everyone on the same page in terms of monitoring is so important." Um, and she noted data harmonization for microplastics is being done by groups like the MOEJ and NOAA, but as Audrey said, it's really hard. Yes. Um, cheers well, for doing thanks, this thanks work. Thanks, Jennifer, for your uh, <laughs> encouragement, and we're really, really happy to have you uh, in the group. And one more question right now. Okay. So, oh, okay. And this was directed at Amy, actually. Amy, for those of us submitting data to MDT, which NOAA sponsors, is there any reason to get involved in MDOS, or is the data already to be counted for via NOAA? So I don't know if Amy has seen that or Audrey, if you know the answer to that. I do not. <laughs> okay. But again, you know, um, IMDOS is not about the data itself. It's about how you measure, what you measure, how you share it, and so on. So um, since NOAA will be or you know, at some point, or is already in the discussion, um, I'm pretty sure this will reflect back to the people who will be uh, providing data to NOAA, hopefully. Okay, and Amy, I unmuted you if, if you are able to. Yeah, can you hear me? Respond to that. Yes, we can. Hi. Yes, yeah, so hi, Eva. So I, yeah, I think you meant MDP, not MDT. So our database is strictly for people who are collecting data using our shoreline monitoring method. Um, so Hillary shared the link previously it's publicly available, publicly accessible. You do have to create an account just using your email and a login password, but then you have access to the existing database. So people can access the data um, and work with the data. And then, um, yeah, if you want to do your own monitoring site and sign up for a monitoring site. Oh, okay, she meant the ring to read tracker. Oh, okay. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Hillary can probably speak better to the marine debris tracker because we're working with UGA right now to incorporate our own um, method into the tracker. So I don't know, Ava, it's like you're asking my opinion if you should join MDOS. <laughs> I don't know. That's, yes. that's oh, for you to decide, well, I, I Ava. Think, I can't I tell you what to do. <laughs> do. I think we could leave it as will the, will the, will the data from Noah be transferred over? Um, Hillary, I, I, you can unmute yourself um, if you are able to. Right. Well, just to clarify, um, the uh, we're referencing two different data streams. It sounds like there's NOAA's Marine Debris Monitoring Assessment Project, which is a methodology and database, um, and that can certainly contribute to the MDOS effort um, and the Marine Debris Tracker app is something that uh, NOAA ha has sponsored in the past and we are in the process of working with that team to, as Amy mentioned, integrate our methodology into the app because it's a platform that's, there's some underlying standardization uh, in the list but not in the methodology for collecting data. So I think it will be a open question uh, what which components of that data can uh, contribute to the MDOS effort. 
uh, or perhaps the MDOS will influence the direction that the Marine Debris Tracker app goes in. But I think the folks from that team would be a, a good group to also include um, in the working groups. Okay, fantastic. And I think we've covered everything that was there. Um, there was someone who asked for a webinar certificate after the webinar, uh, and I, I have your name. And if anybody else needs one, you can shoot me an email at sarah at octogroup.org. Um, so we'll wrap up. I wanted to say a huge thank you to Daphne and Audrey. Uh, Daphne, I believe you're fairly new in your position and you did a fabulous, present, a fabulous presentation. So kudos there. Um, and thank you both for being here today to share this new initiative. Um, also, thank you to everyone uh, who uh, attended and participated in the chat. There was a lot of good information flow through the chat and uh, kudos to uh, Amy and Hillary for uh, jumping up to answer questions um, without much warning. Um, so thank you everyone. If there's other things you wanna see on webinars, let me know at that sarah at octogroup.org. And thank you for being here today. And we look forward to having you on future webinars. Bye everyone. Thank you. Thank you, bye-bye.